turn the music back on. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Russell, for that introduction uh, and for inviting me here to speak at the John Adams Institute. This is really a tremendous honor for me, and I'm, I'm grateful uh, for the invitation to be here. I guess I should begin by explaining, by telling you, that there is a very bizarre contest that's held every spring in New York City called the United States Memory Championship. And I'm a science journalist, that's what I do, and I heard about this contest and I thought it sounded kind of interesting. Uh, I had this vision in my mind's eye of uh, a bunch of rain men, savants, people with photographic memory, freaks of nature of some kind, who got together on the weekend and competed to see who was the freakiest. <laughs> and I showed up at the contest um, and found something rather different. The people who were competing in this contest, who were memorizing entire poems, they were memorizing strings of hundreds of random numbers, entire shuffled packs of playing cards, uh, the names of hundreds of strangers that they had never met before. They all professed to have just average memories. They all claimed that they had trained themselves to perform these utterly miraculous feats. And I was like, no way, it's unbelievable. And I was standing outside the competition hall, uh, smoking a cigarette with this guy called Ed Cook, who had one of the best trained memories in all of England. He had come over as a kind of spring training for the World Championships, which were going to be held later that year, later that summer, in the United Kingdom. And I started talking with him, and he said to me, yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> you're a journalist. Do, do you know Britney Spears? <laughs> what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? He says, <clears throat> because I really want to teach Britney Spears how to memorize the order of a shuffled pack of playing cards on U.S. national television. It'll prove to the world that anybody... 